Uh, this is the brooch I did uh, Saturday. I will need a rolling pin, an exacto knife, a brooch pin, and some white pearl primo, and of course some bacon bond. Now I am going to get my uh, sheet of clay that was on the thicker setting, and I will roll the um, uh, texture pin on it. That's uh, kind of hard. Well, I did it. But um, what you want to do is to do a nice texture, and I'll put a link to all these. And the sun went in the cloud, so this is the light. Anyway, um, it's up to you whatever texture you want to use. I'll put, as I said, I'll put some links for some of these uh, texturizing pins. And then, mica shift? No, no mica shift. Okay, then I'm going to put some bacon bond on the back of the brooch. And I have to tell you something. I saw the other day uh, Fiona Abelsmith's um, tutorial on a beautiful uh, cherry blossoms brooch. And I loved the way that she did the back of the brooch, the attaching of the pin, much better than the way I used to do it. So I will do it like her. And I will put a link to her tutorial as well, just in case you haven't seen it. But anyway, so um, attach the um, textured sheet to the back of uh, your brooch and make sure you don't trap any air bubbles, trim any excess clay, rough trim for now, and then decide where you want to put your uh, pin. I think that there should be good. And then just do a cutout from where the pin is supposed to be. The thing that I found was that I need to do an extra little cut because this uh, pin has a um, type of little, uh, I don't know, a spring that has a little wire sticking out. So after I placed back that cut out, I had to cut a little groove for that wire to go through. Anyway, so I'm going to place the pin back in. And then cover it. Yeah, I better open that pin. It's going to make things easier, I would think. Maybe. So, okay. Then uh, place back that uh, cutout. And then what I am doing there after I place the cutout back with a lot of care and attention and my. Uh, fingers trying to do a very delicate job. They've been kind of stiff this morning, I have no idea why. Anyway, after you place that cut out, um, try, if you don't have a flexible uh, texture, try to kind of blend and match with the texture. So what I did, actually, I just used my um, bowl styluses, the larger one, to do the blending. And then I use the smaller one to pretty much continue the whole texture thing. So there wouldn't be any kind of, um, you know, a discontinuation of the texture. Even if the pin comes on top of it and you wouldn't be able to see it still. It's prettier that way. So as you can see, I am just kind of continuing that texture I put on the back and yeah those pins come in all kinds of shapes and patterns I got mine from one of my subscribers and sponsors who sent me a whole set of them and I love them they are so awesome um, anyway that's why I, I put so many in them I'm still looking for more uh, in the Amazon influencer store uh, be careful because some of them come from China, so they might take a long time. The ones that my subscriber sent me took, I don't know, like five weeks, something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, try and match that texture on the back as well as you can. It might be a little bit uh, detailed work, you know, tedious, but it's not difficult at all. 
and see that's where I uh, trim any little excess that might be near the um, closing of the, the brooch but as I said when I try to close it I got a little bump there that needs fixed but as I said when I tried to close it I realized that oops that little wire kind of bumps in the clay so I have to make a groove so I'm making a groove still need some more so I'm going to leave that little groove there if I want my brooch to close anyway so once you do that then you can now start and uh, trim nicely so I'll use my blade in a 45 degrees angle because uh, see I decided that <clears throat> excuse me the um, brooch was too beautiful simple as it is and you know I've told you so many times before that when you want to do something really elegant um less is more and the brooch has these beautiful simple and elegant white lines uh, and again, the thing is that uh, Fimo is not, the Fimo translucent is not very translucent. So yes, this one specifically will have a little bit of a plasticky feel. And as I said during the live, I didn't use the Primo because the batch of white I have is very, very stretchy. So it's completely unsuitable for cane work. And I didn't use Pardo because even if I do have white Pardo, it's kind of hard to come buy it in the US. So you'd have to order it from the UK, which is not too bad. I mean, the prices are not much higher than Trish's and the shipping is very reasonable. But that's why I did it in Fimo. And the Fimo translucent is not as translucent as others. Um, one of my friends did it in Cernit and she said it came up beautiful. So you can definitely try it in Cernit. I will try and research what uh, colors you should use if you do the Cernit one. I'll have to ask her actually and I'll post the colors for Primo and Pardo as well in the video description so after I've cut and then I'm smoothing nicely with alcohol and then guess what I'm going to do I'm going to use that texture rolling pin to texturize that edge as well so it wouldn't look you know like texture flat edge so because that way you can get a much nicer thing. And once I do that, I'm going to bake it for 45 minutes at uh, 275. And then, of course, it will need reinforce, uh, reinforcing the buff. Because, you know, the buff gets a little bit dull. Now, you can leave it like this, but I decided to give it just a little extra oomph. A very delicate one. <clears throat> so I'm applying a little bit of the um, uh, Art Alchemy uh, Opal Magic Wax, and that is the Vintage Silk. And I'm just touching up the raised areas, and then I will do the, the those beveled edges as well. And then, of course, you wait for the wax to harden for 10-15 minutes, and then you can buff it. And you have a beautiful, very elegant Hawaiian plumeria frangipani brooch. Happy claim!